This is the ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro, a long name for a compact astronomy camera. Today, I'm gonna to take you over its performance, some included accessories, as well as some extra accessories that you'll need to buy to get the most out of this camera. My name's Rowan, and let's get started. To start, let's talk about the I.O. of this camera. As you can see on the back here, the majority of the space is taken up by this large fan. This fan allows the 294 to keep itself temperature regulated. We'll touch more on that in the cooling section of this review. Above and to the right, you see the 12 volt, 3 amp DC input. Next around, we have the USB 3 input. This takes all those beautiful photos that you'll be taking on this camera and transports them to your laptop. Next to that, we have a USB 2 hub. This allows you to connect other USB 2 accessories like a filter wheel or a guide camera that don't need the same throughput as the 294 and can get away with USB 2 while keeping all your cables nice and short and neat. According to ZWO guidelines, this camera can cool 35 to 40 degrees below the current ambient temperature. I personally haven't pushed it above about 30 degrees below ambient, but I would believe that it could go a little bit more, especially if your conditions are favourable with the right amount of humidity. This graph shows you how much power it takes for the ASI 294 to cool itself effectively. We can see that you can achieve about 30 degrees below ambient, only using about half an amp of power on that 12 volt. This is quite good and really allows you to make the most out of a battery situation if you're away from a power source, and allows you to run for many hours at a time without running out of juice. As with most things in this field, this doesn't scale linearly, and you can see that increasing it just another 5 degrees takes another 0.25 amps, and another 5 beyond that takes half an amp, and by this stage you're up to about 1.25 amps. Now this is still fine if you're on mains power or only plan on running on battery for a couple of hours at a time, but you will start to run into issues here if your battery isn't large enough and you want to stay out all night. Personally, when I shoot, I keep my temperature at about negative 10 degrees Celsius, and I find that's fantastic. We can go into some of the dark and bias frames later on and talk about the amount of noise, and you'll see that that works very well. So here we can see a number of accessories, a couple which come with the camera, many of which are added after. On the left we have this really nice padded pouch. This is great for carrying around your 294, um, if you happen to be putting it in a backpack for example, if you're traveling, or just want to leave it on a shelf and not let it get dust. Moving clockwise at the back, this is a power adapter. It takes your AC current from your wall socket and converts it into 12 volt, maximum 5 amps. This gives enough juice for the ASI 294's cooler to run if you're at home or if you have a home observatory. I usually shoot out on the road, so I mostly actually use batteries, which you can see in the middle here. This is a 100 watt hour, 12 volt talent cell battery. And you can see underneath it here, the cable which I normally use. It is a DC 2.1 millimeter to DC 2.1 millimeter cable, which is about five meters long, which gives me a plenty of space. It allows me to keep the battery in a warmer spot like the car or bag, where it won't get all dewy overnight. Moving to the right, we have the included USB 3 type B connector. This connects your ASI 294 with a type B connector to the normal USB 3 connector that you would have say on your laptop or your home desktop. Moving clockwise again, and we have two different spacers, a 21 millimeter spacer and a 16.5 millimeter spacer. These allow you to more optimally position the camera within an image train so that you can get focus correctly. Personally, I only need to use the 16.5 millimeter spacer, but it's great that they included multiple sizes. Skipping over the camera, and we have a light pollution filter. I live in a really light polluted area, so I use this IDAS LPS D2 48 millimeter filter whenever I'm imaging nebula. This helps me cut through some of that light pollution and get a better signal to noise ratio. I also really wanted to show you how a two inch filter screws really easily into these spaces that ZWO supplies. Let's get into the calibration side of the 294. And to start, let's talk about dark current. Dark current is a small amount of electrical charge that runs through the device and builds up over time, giving you false signal. You can see here what a 240 second dark frame looks like from the 294. 
you'll see that most of it is reasonably even. There are some small speckles here or there, caused by fluctuations in temperatures on some of the pixels or stuck pixels, but there is one obvious feature, and that is in the top right corner. This is amp glow, and creeps in, leak small amounts of electric charge, affecting those protons thinking they've received light when they haven't. Due to this, it's important for you to take dark calibration frames. This allows you to cancel out this effect in post-processing. Would it be better if that 294 had no amp glow? Yeah, sure. Does it impact your image quality in the, the day? Not so much if you've got the calibration frames. Thankfully, as mentioned earlier, the rest of the image is really nice and flat. This graph here shows how the dark current is impacted by the temperature of the sensor. The colder the sensor is, the less of that electrical charge leakage is detected. So really, you do want to be down the left side of this graph. You want to be, I would say, negative 10 or colder. Now for me in a warm climate, that's a little bit difficult. If you are already in a cold climate, that will help you a lot and you can really ramp this even further. Let's quickly touch about bias frames. Similar to dark frames, a bias frame helps calibrate your image by subtracting the sense of read noise. This is a stretched bias frame from the ASI294, taken at negative 10 degrees Celsius. As you can see, there's some slight vertical banding from the read noise, but overall the image is very flat. Many people actually say that you don't need bias frames for the 294, but I leave mine in just to be safe. So, how should you shoot with the 294? Well, in my opinion, there's two modes you should shoot in. Firstly, there's zero gain. This is like the native ISO of the camera. And the reason you'd want to shoot here is to make the most of the large full well depth of this camera. This allows you to take really long exposures without blowing out stars or having really bright parts of a nebula lost to overexposure, say for shooting the Orion Nebula. The other option is at 120 gain. This is what ZWO calls high conversion gain mode. You still get that full 13 stops of dynamic range that you want, but read noise is dramatically cut from about 7.5 ERMS down to under 2 ERMS. The sacrifice for this is that you lose some full well depth, so stars are more likely to bloat early, but because you're using a higher gain, you'll also not need to take as long exposures. So this is great if you're in the city, like I am, where you're actually limited by light pollution. Of course, there are times when you will want to boost that gain up, I often do this when I'm doing manual focusing, for example, or wanting to do some electronically assisted astronomy, where you want to show people what things could look like if our eyes were better at viewing in the dark. And you just want to really quickly gain that signal to see, you know, are you centered on a target correctly, for example. But when you're imaging, I highly suggest either using zero or 120 gain. So what are the cons for the ASI 294? Personally, I haven't experienced too many. But one thing that I have experienced is USB connectivity issues. And I'm not sure if this is the camera or the included cable that they have, or even perhaps some adapter as my laptops require USB-C, so I have to adapt from USB-A to C. But I have noticed that the camera is very sensitive and some slight movements of cables, either in the breeze or when say your camera is doing a meridian flip, can sometimes cause the camera to disconnect. And this is really annoying. The only other main downside I think of this camera is the fact that it does have amp glow in that top right corner. Thankfully this can be dealt with in post-processing, but ideally we wouldn't have to do that at all. So what's my final verdict? The 294 is a solid one-shot color camera. It has good sensitivity, the construction is solid, and for its price, you could do a lot worse. So I definitely recommend it if you're looking to move from a DSLR to a dedicated astro camera, or if you have a mono and you want to add a one-shot color to reduce the amount of time you have to spend with your RGB filters.